best friend. I think about you every day. You brought me through so many trials. Lord, I give you all my praise. Lord, I give you all my praise. Yeah, Jesus, you my best friend. I think about you every day. You brought me through so many trials. Lord, I give you all my praise. Lord, I give you all my praise. My heart used to be cold. Couldn't trust nobody no more. God came into my life. And he switched up my mold. And he took me out my comfort zone. Now I'm in my God zone. I ain't worried about nobody. Never got soft, not alone. Never really had a home. But he made sure I stayed stable and focused. And now I'm hoping that hope. And I know that Jesus died and left me hope. And now I feel like hope, man. Hope, man. I done got to live it. I no longer deal with dope, man. And I really love and miss my homies. But we ain't messing together, bro. We on two different levels. It's probably looking like I got it all together. But Jesus had to really take his time and put me back together. Start from the lies and deceit. And all the broken promises that was promised to me. So I vowed to myself to always keep you first. You the only one made sure I train when I thought that I would die at first. Jesus, you my best friend. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is Maurice Dwayne Smith back with Nuclear Popcorn. And we have an incredible guest of people, fantastic people from writers. We have poets. We have martial artists. We have a very special guest who is unique to the industry in that she's a female in a, as they say, male-controlled industry. And I just want you guys to know that I'm not saying men own females. I'm just saying it's an <laughs> industry that's hard for women to get some, to get a foot in some parts of it. And once I introduce her to you and you see her position, you say, okay, now I see what you're talking about. So without much ado, let's, could, could I get, um, and this is uh, Miss Levette Cherie, but I was hoping we could start with Miss Lady Reed, yeah, because I want a specific, a specific type of trajectory first. Is that possible? Okay, well, we're gonna let, Let's go with Lavette. How's it going, Lavette? Oh, I'm first. I'm. It's going great. It's wonderful. I'm surviving the pandemic. Hell, I woke up, so yeah. can't complain. Yeah, very, cool. very cool. I just wanted to uh, congratulate you. You've been red hot on fire during not only the pandemic but during everything. You've been just incredible, and um, I mean, you're working with Grammy singers like. Uh, um, you know the guy that sings uh, all those songs, McKnight. Oh, I was on a show with Brian McKnight. Yes. Yeah, and I mean that's just a Jody Watley. Mm -hmm. And she's one of my favorites from years gone by. You know, I um, her too. Yeah. yeah, but now you're doing more than just poetry. You have your own album or albums, plural out. Okay. Uh, yeah, the Renaissance, I just dropped it. Uh, it was supposed to be March 1st, but because of COVID, we decided to hold back and it, I actually dropped it on March 31st because that date just had a, a meaning for me. And my album is called The Renaissance. Um, I love it, I'm in love with it. The sound is, uh, it's a niche product that I've created. Um, I was fortunate to have a Grammy uh, artists like uh, Bob Tucker, who is a guitarist and an engineer, and also Jane Getz, they both did features on my album. So it's been a very fun time working on the album, a project that I had never planned on. It just kind of fell in my lap. Wow, it's incredible. Very incredible. Now, you're also. Did you listen to it? <laughs> huh? Have you listened to it? I've heard some of it like uh, crazy. You, you have a way oh, yeah. of. You have a way of doing things that is a little unique. Your delivery and, and the way you do it is kind of unique. So that's so when I listen to it, it's I wouldn't <laughs> say it's necessarily erotic, but definitely sensual. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you know, you feel where you're coming from, and it's it's very nice. It's, is it being mostly released on the East Coast or West Coast? Because I've heard it a couple here, but like one of my other friends who's done a similar album told me most of his is on the East Coast. Actually, my music is available on all digital platforms. It's uh, available throughout the United States, people all over the world, in Europe, uh, Asia, India. Um, I have a lot of following out of there. Um, I didn't really think my music was sensual. I thought I would call it PG-13, but um, recently when I uh, performed, I did Fahrenheit and all the 
men and everything got all excited in the audience. <laughs> and I was like, wow, well, I can't do that song anymore. <laughs> well, I mean, it's just you. You're, you're an actress as well. So you have a way of emitting, you know, certain types of vibes and probably things you don't even know about. But it's yeah. just you, you have a way of doing things. It's very cool. Now, how's your acting going? Because I've been to at least one or two, at least one of your one of your plays, and I know you have been actually flown as far as East Coast to help people set up certain things and produce things like, say, for Flavor Flav. So I know you've been, yeah. it's like, you stay busy. You're, you're in an industry where, uh-oh, are you still there? Yeah, I'm here. Can you see me? I see you, just, you keep talking, I see you. Oh, okay, I don't see you, but um, yeah. you're in an industry that, is kind of locked down because of the, you know, the pandemic, but you're doing just fine. That's just what it comes Yeah, to um, I actually had just got casted in, um, I, I'm, I'm a theater actress mostly. I've done some film, but I had gotten casted to play Diane Carroll in a traveling show that was going to start out of Oakland all the way, you know, to New York, but that got put on hold and we were really bummed about that. Um, but recently, um, you know, Dr. Dre had, um, given some money to the city of Compton um, for the production companies out of there and another company I'm working with. And uh, he's going to be creating some web series um, and series for Netflix and things like that in BET. So recently I was casted in a series called, I think it's called Let Them Eat Cake. Wow. And uh, I just filmed that. It was a lot of fun. We had uh, an actor, uh, his name is Patrick Fawcett who came from the have and have nots. And um, we had some other actors and writers that were part of that production, but it was a lot of fun. Sounds like it. Very cool. so I'm, I'm getting some work, some work. It's not totally dead, but you know. Well, from, from this perspective, you're doing a lot of radio shows. You're, I mean, you're hot. Yeah. You, you're definitely hot. You're, you're yeah, as well. I would really like to get my radio, my music on the radio, my friend, if, if my friend is listening to this, but it's a lot of hoops and stuff you have to jump through. I mean, they put my music on web-based channels, but to actually be on live radio, I have done some live radio interviews um, and I've got to do some of my music that way, just um, acapella, but yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Very cool. Well, I just want to thank you for coming on the show. We're going to come back to you a little later because uh, one of the things you said about what you want to do, one of my guests here might be the person that can help you do that. Miss, uh, I think you've met her already, Miss Irene Clavia. We'll come back to her a little later. You'll see exactly what I mean, okay? Sounds great. Okay, and uh, my studio experts, can you bring on Lady Lelaine Reed and Mr. David Reed, please? I'm a there she is. Hey, here. She, she is a resident, and here's our here's her husband. He has a resident, booty breaker, heartbreaker. They're very dangerous <laughs> people. They're, they're very dangerous people, but they're very soothing and loving people. In fact, lady is an author, okay, and a uh, published poet. Her husband David happens to be a grandmaster, not grandmaster Flash, but grandmaster. <laughs> Grandmaster yep. Eighth Don, by the way. Mm -hmm. Lady is a fourth Don. So now you also have a company in the valley called Rama, is that right? Yes. It's a martial arts school and wellness club. Rama stands for what? Rama stands for Reeds Active Martial Arts. And it means in Sanskrit, actually, a name of a, a god called Rama. From okay. Rama. Very cool. So uh, we've touched briefly on your writing and I was unaware that you had four, is it four books or five books or six books? <laughs> I've written you know, four books. <laughs> yeah. you know, is that four? Because I know you did one called The Spirit of a Champion, right? Yeah, that's the first one. The number one book I've written, it was only uh, an ebook, book uh, and I published it in lulu.com. It's called the mind of a champion revealed. Yeah, yeah, cool. Now, is that strictly about just everyday life or more geared towards martial arts? Um, it was a combination of martial arts and more on spirituality and 
you know, almost like a self-help book, just okay, like my yeah. um, uh, Create Your Best, oh, which cool. is my second book. Yeah, that's the book for the rebooting of self. Yeah. Taking it to the top of the bottom and coming back up, right? Yep, yep. But now I think you also use music to also reboot yourself because you and music are definitely good friends. When you hear music, you go somewhere else. You know, you're <laughs> a great dancer, right? You, you, you love music? You... I love music, yeah, I love yeah. dance. <laughs> do, you, do you guys make music too? Uh, we do play the guitar. Yeah. Hmm? Yep. So do, do you actually play an instrument? Do you, do you sing and that type of thing? I play guitar and Lady is learning. Lady does what? She's learning guitar, but she's getting it now. Oh, cool. Yeah, Very cool. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I've been playing my for most of my life. Very cool. Just I, just fun, want to, I just want to congratulate you because you're going to get your eighth done in November. Yep. And yeah. could you give the audience just a little idea of the type of disciplines that you are uh, teaching at, at your Roma Academy? Yeah, we, we teach a, a traditional style called Tong Sudo. It's Korean martial art. We, we also teach uh, Bruce Lee system, Jeet Kune Do. Yeah, yeah. And we also train with Leo Fong, one of Bruce Lee's uh, best friend, close friend. He's created a style called Wei Kune Do, which we also learn. And then a uh, lady actually teaches Qigong and uh, and then we also teach Tai Chi as well as Eskrima, a Filipino uh, uh, weapon defense. And, and yoga. And yoga, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot, yeah. Is, is, is any of that like Kenpo or is it, is it Kenpo? Mm -hmm. Similar, but uh, Jeet Kune Do is direct, effective and simple. Whereas there's not a lot of blocking, it's just direct. You just go for your target. So it sounds like a little like shoulder Tom. Yeah, you just you just you just kick him in the groin, kick him in the kneecap, eye poke, that type of thing. Just very direct. So and then once you knock him out, then you tell him a nice poem, right? To make him feel yeah, good. or run away. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I've I've, thought, I've always thought you guys are pretty unique dynamic duo yeah. and now how's it going for your studio during the pandemic is it taking a hit right now or you guys yeah it, it took a hit on us and uh we have some students we're doing zoom classes and we also developed which lady didn't talk about uh she has a series of videotapes uh dvds that we teach uh kicking stretching uh self-defense and uh, we have those for download. We also have the hard, hard, she's grabbing one. We also have the hard one if you wanna order it and we mail it to you, but uh, she created these. And, uh, and so now we're doing, we're trying to market these too. These, oh, and massage. She's a massage therapist, okay. uh, shiatsu, and also a uh, Reiki master. We're both Reiki masters and we do a lot of healing work. Okay. So, like, if you have a problem with your back or something, lady is the person to go see. Yeah, I'm the healer. Yeah. I I am the killer and the healer. The killer and the healer, yeah. Oh, she right. beat you up if you try to run out the door without... <laughs> okay. let, me, yeah. let, me see those. let me see those again. Show can them up you there. Hear... Oh, show them yeah, up. can you hear uh, his high voice? Yeah, yeah. It's from all the... Being okay. kicked in the groin. These are... The DVDs. Okay, stretching. Yeah, so, dynamic okay. stretch. Uh, dynamic stretching. Yeah. Dynamic kicking. Cool. And uh, dynamic massage. Cool. And uh, a bonus on the girl from Copacabana. <laughs> so do you have do you have a Barry Manilow sing it too while while you're doing it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just kidding. But uh, a lot of people don't know that you all are actors too. We had the uh, yep. We had a good time of watching Lazarus get raised about a year and a half ago. Yep. We, yep. Saw, we saw Jesus raise Lazarus. <laughs> people will say it's not true, but we saw it. Of we saw it. Was it. David Locker. <laughs> <laughs> it was a movie, but you know, the, the, just a little joke there. But it was it was fun. It was it was fun. But um. 
just want to thank you guys for coming. We have a, as you know, we have uh, the vet Sharia, she's a poet. So I'm kind of hoping that Lady and Sharia, although they've already met, you guys have met her at David's uh, mm -hmm. music deal at Molly Malone. No, I don't think I met her that night. I don't, no. I don't know. It, I, I, don't I, I was dancing. I, yeah, I remember. <laughs> I remember you, and uh, you were the hit of the night. I must say. All right, yeah. now. Yep, Thank yep, you. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so let's get you guys together, and let's get some let's get some popcorn popping. But before we get too popping, let's bring on Bella Maori. Can we have Bella Maori pop up? Hello, hello. There she is. Let me tell Hi you guys here. who this young lady is. Bella Maori is a Southern California native and was raised in Los Angeles. She's a writer, actress, activist, and scholar. Early on, she worked as a model and then starred in her first feature film, independent film, The Internment Games. Okay, Internship Games, actually. She will be starring in a series called Ugly, the set for release in 2021, which highlights identity as witness to the black female gaze offering a singular perspective on colorism. It is a fictional story that mirrors her struggles as an actress in black Hollywood. Bella Murray has three college degrees, a BA, MFA, an MAT from USC, and is currently a third year PhD candidate. And she also speaks with five languages, right? No, two. <laughs> two. Yeah, but they're Chinese and <laughs> that's Chinese, right, but yeah. Chinese. <laughs> and then she writes it too, which is pretty wild. Thank you. <laughs> and you also yeah, have- Well, I'm really three. happy to be here. <laughs> your, your first film went to Cannes, didn't it? Didn't, didn't, didn't your first film go to Cannes? Cannes yeah, uh, yeah, that was a while ago. Um, it was a great experience. Um, it was in the short film um, category. And so uh, it was, it was uh, surreal uh, and amazing. And it just, it's, it's an experience that I just wish everyone could, could um, experience, especially for minorities, you know, to be able to do something like that. But um, thank you for having me here. Thank and um, I guess, thank you, thank you. <laughs> well, um, I just want people to know how incredible you are because it's very rare to just, I mean, everyone wants to hit the knockout in the first round, wants to knock the ball out in the first pitch. Your first attempt at Cavs goes to Cavs. That's pretty phenomenal. I want to congratulate you on that. And also you have this ugly, now I'm wondering, some people will say, well, did, did she get ugly because she's beautiful? Are they just trying to go against oh, no. and get a really beautiful person? <laughs> I'm just kidding, but um, how did the ugly uh, film start? Or well, can can you talk about it? Okay, well, yeah, um, it's it's actually yeah, it's actually um, you know, beauty is subjective, and I think I'm just kind of going in terms of how Hollywood sees beauty, and I'm just kind of taking it as I make my you know um, as I step through Hollywood and the things that I've experienced for being a black woman and not only just a black woman, but a, a brown skinned black women, woman mm -hmm. in, in black Hollywood and how you're treated differently. And I just kind of wanted to highlight that. And it's also aligned with my uh, PhD dissertation in terms of black women identity in, in America and what that means and the confusion that that brings. And so um, I wrote the story and um, we're actually shooting it on Saturday and mm. um, Wow. It's based on the uh, the backdrops of, of, of Los Angeles and the skateboard subculture, but seen through the Black experience. So there's a uh, Zuri, who is the lead um, actress, is a dark skinned um, actress, and she's um, trying to make it in Hollywood. And she keeps going through all these things where she feels ugly because she's never put in the forefront because of her skin tone. And so it's like the elephant in the room, I think, um, in the Black community that people know that it's going on. That is like the whole paper bag test in, um, you know, you're, it, it really, you suffer economically, um, you suffer self-esteem. I mean, there's a lot of things that go deep into that and all is tied into identity. And so um, I wanted to portray that. And so, um, yeah, we're going to take a, a journey with this series called Ugly um, through Zuri's mm -hmm. eyes and um, how she's got to find herself and believe that she's a beautiful person despite her, her skin tone. Even though the world that's around her keeps telling her that she's ugly, um, she has to accept who she is and um, we have to see that journey. So you have to tune in <laughs> to 2021, um, you know, Very is cool. the release date and, um, you know, more news will be coming 
uh, after we shoot it and stuff like that. So I'm That's really cool. excited That's, about that because it, yeah. it's real important to me, Black identity and, and especially Black women and women in general of color and how we are um, pushed aside and we just, you know, you just feel ugly. Like what's wrong with me? Because you don't fit the the ideal aesthetic of the blonde or the blue eyes or, you know, you, you're not type zero. So you're looked at as if you're not good enough. And so you kind of navigate and do through life with this in the back of your mind. And every time you get rejected, you're just like, I'm ugly. What's wrong with me? And so I want to, I want to tell this story and I want to start conver more conversations about it. I mean, we talk about it, but we don't do anything about it. And so I think um, the, the story highlights that. Yeah. It sounds like a, sounds like a tale that needs to be told and you look like the right vehicle to get it out there. So <laughs> yeah, definitely. So now this really didn't have too much to do with you, but when you're in Palm Springs, I have a feeling you were with your sister, right? When, when uh, she's, a, she's actually in Palm Desert. Yeah, she's in Palm Desert, yeah. And oh, it's, yeah. it's cooking out there. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I won't go out there because I, I can't take it. Yeah, it's, it's, I can't deal with that type of thing. <laughs> yeah, but... Um, well, I just want yeah. people to know that you come from a very musical, very entertainment-laden family. Your brother-in-law is a well-known guitarist. You hear him on... Well, I used to hear him a lot on uh, mm -hmm. 94.7 The Wave and met him. Very cool guy. And your sister was voted the number one UK uh, R&B singer in the whole UK. Mm -hmm. As a black woman, I think that's a very unique thing to do. Uh, how's, how's she doing? And she turned to making films. And I think the last thing she did was a uh, award-winning film. Is that correct? Well, yeah, she's uh, doing things. Uh, she started a film, um, uh, independent film, I guess community, you know, in the Palm Desert. And so it's, she's really making waves. And I think that's fantastic. You know, just women of color, um, just telling their stories and showing like, yes, we can do it too. You know, because, because like we said earlier, you know, when we were discussing things, you know, uh, the film industry is a male dominated industry. And so we're trying to claw our way through too. You know, we have stories to tell. Everybody mm -hmm. has stories to tell. Right. But we also want to tell our stories because they're just so important for not only just entertainment, but also for our well-being, you know, our health, our mental health, and our self-esteem. And I think um, those are things that we need to keep thriving, right, in this uh, mm -hmm. in this community, especially in these in these tumultuous times that we're in right now. Very cool. And that's a nice segue into Miss Irene Eclavia. Can I have okay. Miss Irene Eclavia come bust out of the popcorn? There she is. How are you doing? Hello, I'm doing wonderful. How are you doing? I'm doing great. This is. Irene Clavia, she is the CEO of the Dragonfly, the Elevate Dragonfly, and she's a network producer. Yes. Okay. And I think you could probably count that number on one hand, I would imagine, that in this country and I don't know if nationwide, but you're you're very powerful. You're you're a very dangerous place. Very, very <laughs> dangerous place. <laughs> well, it's Hello? Oh, there there she is. So I was hoping I could just build up, build up, build up, and everyone's saying how they want to do work. You have the ability through your vehicle, Elevate Dragonfly, to possibly give everyone on here some sort of lift, some elevation um, opportunities. And I just want to thank you for coming on. I've known you for a while. I never knew you were, I kind of knew you were a, a producer because I, I saw you on the, on the red carpet and I was just taken aback by your beauty and the fact that you're so easy to talk to. And um, we, need, we need to speak with Miss uh, Eclavia again, please. Are you still there, Irene? Irene, are you there? Where is she? We need to speak she, with I think Irene. she's muted. She's mute. Her phone's yeah, muted. Yeah, she probably accidentally muted herself. Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. I can't. Can you hear me now? No problem. Yeah. My apologies. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> But we're going to edit that. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah, yeah but I was just saying it's very nice to see you. And you said that you have a client named Ashton Hills. Yes, I have a, I have a client named Ashton Hills. So basically, Elevate Dragonfly started uh, in a dream. And um, it's about elevating all of God's people at the same time. And so a lot of what I post is basically the dreams and visions that I had as a child, right? of how to go ahead and, and move through the world system. And so there was one post that I did 
it said, awaken the kings and the queens. And so as I did that, along with the scriptures, Ash actually reached out to me and he was following me and I hadn't understood or when he introduced himself, we were just drawn. I was drawn by his energy. And so he told me his background story of where he came from and how he wanted to also share um, how God has blessed him and Ooh. spiritually how he connected um, with his music and that's how the journey began so if you listen to when you listen to his song which is Jesus is my best friend mm -hmm. um, you'll see where he really comes from and the heart and so when I heard his music I really fell in love with it and I said you know what I'll help you and so mm -hmm. that's basically the beginning of that story <laughs> cool. well, I've actually listened to it and we're going to edit some of his music into this if, if it's okay for you when we do the final cut and Get it onto the onto the station for airing. That okay. that's cool with you. We'll do that. Yes. Now you mentioned a person named Virtuosity that you're connected yes. with. Yes, uh, Virtu Virtuoso is his name. So he's basically a set celebrity photographer. I actually met him at the BET Awards and he's absolutely amazing. They're based out in Florida. And so the way the network uh, producer, my my company works, is that we handle a lot of different um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? We have a lot of connections throughout the nation. So okay. basically whatever it is my clients are wanting or the people that I meet are needing, we have the means to go ahead and utilize our contacts um, as producers to say, hey, X, Y, and Z. So we help connect the puzzle pieces. So when Thank Ash you. came to me and said, hey, Irene, this is my vision for this, automatically my, my heart went to Bertuccio because he also has the outlets um, to help elevate him where he needs to go as well. So I'm very honored and excited to know that he's somebody that, you know, that I can really work with. Bertuccio is somebody I can really work with and then just side by side, just kind of, you know, maneuver through the system because you're right. It is, it is a man's world. Right. And then everything has been um, uh, done a certain way. And so now, I look at what's happening today as a restart. It's almost like a repositioning. And mm -hmm. so we've utilized that as um, the new platform. You know, now everything is social media, everything is attached to, um, you know, the internet. And so since we no longer have the means to do red carpet, then we bring the red carpet to us. Definitely. Yeah. Um, I'm glad you said that because it seems to me that it just it looks like God's gone at the very root of a lot of things, just slashed it down. I wouldn't say yeah. the first is last and last is first, but a lot of people who really don't have too much have now got a serious leverage on doing a lot more, oh. which is, you know, one of the only good things that's come out of the pandemic. Right, you know? right. So now um, what I'd like to know, and probably everyone that's gonna see this wants to know, is how did you get your start? How did you become a network um, producer. And I also saw a photo with you and the great one, Oprah. I don't know how you two met. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was, <laughs> I was honored to be honest with you. She's, she's beautiful. She's amazing. When I saw her speaking at David Makes Man, it was in my heart. And I told myself, you know, one day, one day. And so, and she was so kind to, to just, just be there and be one with all of us, you know, and show her heart and the vision of David makes man. So mm -hmm. basically um, everything started for me at the BET Awards. This is when Elevate Dragonfly really started. Um, mm -hmm. I had literally had lost everything. Um, wow. I lost my house. I lost my, my children after the courts. Wow. I lost my cars, my wow. dog. Um, and then, so you have to have, the trial that leads to the testimony and the testimony that leads into the blessings. Right. But mm -hmm. at the same time, we still walk by faith and not by time. We have to also let go and let God. Right. And so during that time when I was really struggling, I even went through alcoholism, you know, I was on every medication possible. And at the same time I was a hundred pounds heavier. So I really wow. needed to find a way to really just understand who I was as an individual, like a connected spiritual being to a higher power. And then, so when I finally let everything go and the BET awards happened, I felt like I was heaven on earth. 
And I was said, hey, you know, God, how can we make this happen? So that way we are allowed to let everybody be able to experience this type of joy that I'm experiencing today. And so when that happened, everything was is right. has been a dream. It's been so a dream. Came together at the same time. Well, yes, everything did come together at the same time. One of my one of my really good friends, and uh, you know, he was also a client of mine in the beginning, is Carrington Bester. He actually saw me at the BET Awards, and God told him, "Grab her. That is my daughter." And and literally, I was in the on the fourth row, just watching. And I'd never even been to a concert before. Before yeah. I lived Dragonfly, I never I never traveled outside the outside of California, with the exception of Nevada. I hadn't gone mm -hmm. on any airplanes. Literally, I was in a big giant, like a little tiny bubble. And so when the bubble popped, it just everything happened so fast. He put me in situations where I meet the amazing greats like Oprah Winfrey, uh, people with Motown. I've met, you know, um, I Brenda Wilson. I've met. Uh, who's his a daughter of Jackie Wilson. I've met Dr. Duwap. I've met Tyrone Wilson. I've met just, it just keeps on going in terms of just being placed where he needs me to be. So I don't really question it. I'm mm -hmm. honored. And then also, and when I find myself um, wondering or, or, or needing an answer, or just I have special friends like uh, King Yahweh, the Holy Ghost and his people. And so I just kind of just say, hey, and, and my ministry. So that's very cool. Story, yeah. Very cool, very cool. So you've you've gone from bottom to top. So basically you rebooted yourself with faith. Is that basically your tool? That is my tool. Und undeniably, that's my tool. I take a scriptures okay. until it becomes life and allow it to go ahead and just resonate in me. So I learned to listen and obey. I've learned to really say, okay, what do I need to do at this point? Because I made all my choices, right? I made all the choices before and mm -hmm. it, it brought me to a place where I could not um, get up again. I didn't want to wake up. And now I take every new day as a new day, a new experience and say, all mm -hmm. right, you position me where I need to be. So that way I can meet wonderful people like yourself and the people who are on this call and really just own um, and, and bring them where they need to be. Because like I said, it's about elevating all of God's people at the same time. And that's really what it's about. Because with one, we fall, but as a unit, as an army, we grow, so. Very cool, I did that. Now, I've, I've been seeing some very cool dragonflies lately though. I wonder yeah. if, that was a, if that was spiritual, did you send them? No, seriously, I mean like purple ones and big green ones. Just really? flying around, yeah. <laughs> flying around, huh? <laughs> yeah, they just been flying around, just posing like Vogue or something, you know. <laughs> uh, well, I love dragonflies because dragonflies is about illumination. It's also about um, moving to the new level. If you look at the history of a dragonfly, and actually, the reason why my company is named Elevate Dragonfly is because um, I was born the year of the dragon. And okay. so, and so, because it was born you of the dragon, it's I wanted the dragon to elevate and fly, and that's the history of elevate dragonfly. Very cool. Thanks. So, did you ever uh, get into martial arts? I mean, some people think, well, if you're Asian, I I, I know you're biracial, but you do right. have the Asian element. So people just go into martial arts. So, do you ever been martial arts or been affiliated with it? Um, I did do martial arts as a kid. So um, I did do that as a kid. Um, and then um, it was something my parents needed me to do because I went to all girls school my entire life. Right. And right. then also too, um, they just, I was raised to go ahead and um, be a nurse. Right. Um, you know, go into the profession and, mm -hmm. and basically learn too that dreams are for fools. And so to be in this position where I am at right now, I went completely against the grain. So by trade, right? I'm a dental assistant by trade. I'm a nurse by trade. I've mm -hmm. handled some areas in, you know, the real estate area. I've worked with so many different entities, different areas. Just my professions, just depending on what I'm craving for. I was also a teacher. I was mm -hmm. a high school teacher. I taught sports yeah. medicine, career focused yeah. medical, the athletic trainer of the high school. I was a medical assistant uh, teacher. I mean, it, and it's nice for me because um, I didn't feel the need. And when I was, 
um, I didn't feel the need to just stay in one thing. Why are we have? Why do we have to limit ourselves to just one thing that the world tells us that we're going to do? We have a trade, and then we have retirements, and that's it. Yeah. We had to more to it, right? It's just so, the job faster. <laughs> right, exactly. So one day I was literally sitting, I was working at one of the hospitals and I looked at all four walls and I said, God, this can't be it. This can't be it. I can literally mm -hmm. retire here, but how do you expect me to reach out to people if I can't even reach them? Or if I do, it's such a limited amount. Mm -hmm. They'll use me. So go ahead and bring their thing into reality. And here we so are. Is it going to be a Irene and Claudia? story and, and if so, I see some people in the audience that may be able to help you with that such as Miss Bella Maori, Miss uh, Yvette Cherie. I would love it. Are you, are you guys out there? Are you ready to do the Irene and Claudia story? I, I, I would, absolutely, I would absolutely. love your assistance. I really would. I really would because yeah. it's been in my heart to go ahead and do this, but I don't. I didn't know how to. I didn't know where to start. And then at the same time, there's just so it depends on who I'm speaking with, um, and how to go ahead and reach out to what it is that they're going through. Like mm -hmm. one time, I was working at the hospital, and this woman literally came in, and she lost her children to the courts. Mm -hmm. And so as she was crying and not knowing what to do, I literally just experienced that three, four months ago before my company started. Mm -hmm. So I was there to speak to her heart and say, hey, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. Because sometimes he repositions us, right? He puts us in yeah. a place where we need to understand who we are in order for us to grow. So now it becomes a relationship between the higher power and ourselves. So would you say that you had to crash in order, oh, yeah. to, in order to make it? Oh, yeah. Because in yeah. heaven, there is no microwaves, right? There's right. no microwaves. There's only yeah. slow cookers. There's only crock pots. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then so as, but then every er, a lesson unlearned is a lesson repeated. So if you're going backwards and you're repeating those lessons, so then you end up going around in circles, you go around in cycles, and you're not able to move and elevate to the next level because you're always moving backwards. You're back, you come back to what is familiar. And so when we do that, we just can't, we, we all go back to our own uh, emotional needs and wants, and then it no longer becomes a movement going forward. Right. Mm -hmm. I can't say make every day, um, you know, make every day a new day if mm -hmm. I'm going to be treating today as it was yesterday. Mm -hmm. Right. Because if I do that, then I'm just bringing it back. And so now, now I. Um, we are supposed to be the best of who we are, who we're. You, you, I might don't know if I'm making any sense. We are yeah, supposed yeah. to be the better, the better us, right? You're supposed to do like, like Lady Lane said, be your best. What, what was that phrase you said, Lady, about be your best self or something? What was that book that you wrote? You still there, Lady? David, oh. Lady, are you still there? You mean uh, create your best? Yeah, I create your best. best. Yeah. Exactly. We, we are given every chance, every moment to create our best. And especially this time uh, during the quarantine, uh, the pandemic and, you know, all the difficulties that we're uh, going through, we always have to have the faith, as Irene said, and, you know, just keep on uh, creating our best because when we are doing our best now, uh, that's all that matters to really. me. Your past is very well taken care of. Uh, now you're happy and now yeah. you have to be thankful and the future is no problem. Right, well, exactly. Speaking of the future, I have a question. I have a question. How do we get Lady Lelaine's poetry into music? Let's see if we can get her an album. You think that would be possible? Um, Lavette and uh, Irene, is there a way to get her onto the, onto the airwaves? Like oh, yes, MS definitely. Three? Yes, for sure, definitely. There, when there is a will, there is a way, Maurice. <laughs> yes. well, that, well, that, that's what I was thinking when I when I got this group together, because all of a sudden, it's like everyone was asking me to do the show, I was like, "Wow, when when does it start?" And I'm thinking, "Okay, I'm just gonna run with it, God." So I was like, "Boom!" And I thought, "Who would be the most powerful?" When I thought about the best people to put on, because I haven't ever done a show on Zoom this big. I've always done 
big shows in the studio, but never like this on a <laughs> virtual level. So I thought, okay, let's get people who are diverse and who basically kind of we kind of feed upon each other. We feed right. each other, feed upon. So you all seem like the perfect match, perfect well, batch. Well, uh, if I could, if I could I'm chime in for a second, running. I mean, it all kind of comes down to like, you know, where, where I'm talking about this, my series Ugly, you know, it's all it's about, it's internal, what's on the inside of the, of the person. It's not, yes. you know, it's not exterior. You know, I think we we're in a time where everything is so superficial that right. people don't look at the inside of a person anymore. And that's yeah. where it counts. And that's where the change happens. And I think just hearing your story, Irene, and hearing your story, lady, and, and LaVette, you know, it just tells me that, the work that we're doing is it just needs to be done. Um, we yes. need to tell stories. You know, we need to create music that's uh, opening spaces that help women identify with the struggle of, you know, going through things or feeling that they're not, you know, good enough or not important. You know, right. it's, it's all about. It's, I think identity is just at the core of all of these things. You know, it our is. identity and who we are and and how is society perceiving us. You know, right. we can we could see ourselves a certain way, but we have to be able to come to terms who to who we are. And I think um, the, the way we navigate that is so important. And you talked earlier about how, you know, it, it when we have a group of people together, um, we can be stronger. Yes. And um, I agree with that. I think that's just so important. It is. So that's my two cents. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> well, it says the word, in scripture, two or more gathered, right? Yeah. Two or more gathered. We are, that's, you know, a voice to be right there. I am also. <laughs> yeah. Is, uh, is uh, Levesque still there? You've been kind of quiet. Are, are you still there? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's a joy to listen to others talk. Uh. <laughs> well, they need to hear you too. You, you have a, do me a favor, do one of your poems. I want them to hear your delivery because you have a way of delivering a poem that's quite unusual. And, well, and the, the only poem that would be perfect for this time, because I do believe that we are stronger when we stand in multiples versus in one. And I do believe that everything is divine and this time is divine. So the poem I'm gonna share is called Moments. I was, I was gonna say that, in the moment. <laughs> be in the moment. We all know this. So pick up your token. It's such an enjoyment. Gather your focus, capture the now. Don't allow it to be stolen. This chapter is important. Fractures are flowing and there'll be no atonement. The rapture is holding. This can be potent. So gather your omen. This time is golden. The poet has spoken. Be in the moment. Booyah. Very good. I love it. Very cool. Yes, definitely. So, thank you. But that that poem I just I did a cappella on my album. There's uh, some violinist that plays Clarence. We did some add-ons in that, but um, that poem is a is an opener for a lot of things because um, I mean I've listened to everyone's story. I, you have some great guests. I love the women. Like I said, girls, we rule the world. Even though it's a man's world, there's always a woman behind them. <laughs> right. <laughs> we are the next. You know that, right? <laughs> you are the matrix. <laughs> but this, this time is important. Okay. Um, we're going through a pandemic just to be able to come aboard and smile and share our stories and know that there's hope and not really focus on the appearance of things, but mm -hmm. um, kind of drive within you know, internally what you want to share and, you know, exude to others. I think it's right. great. Right. I, I, agree. Agree. I agree. I agree completely. I also think that the pandemic has sparked a, a, a burst of creativity, right? Because I, I wrote this, this script while we were going through quarantine and I'm wondering like, would I, would I have done that? You know, <laughs> you know, with every tragedy, there comes something good out of it, you know? And so, Mm -hmm. um, you know, I don't know if you were able to write some poems or songs or something like that, but um, the creative, the creativity that has come out of it is just wonderful. And so I guess if we look at it from that perspective, um, mm -hmm. us, us as artists, we have to create no matter what's going on. And I think that's what's interesting as well. I mean, the whole world is literally burning up and <laughs> we're still creating, right? Because right. It's, it's inside of us and we have to tell our story. So 
Yeah. Definitely. 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 So now we now we gotta think think about the man molecule here. There's a guy with an XY chromosome over there, and he's wondering <laughs> how do I fit in? How do we bring the XY chromosome into this women's suit, which is hot and vivacious? How do we help David? David, what, what uh, could be done to make your popcorn very special? Well, I've always said that you have to stand behind uh, your woman, your wife, your girlfriend, whoever that is, and you have to support them. And um, a happy, a happy life is a happy wife. If uh, if your woman is angry, you're gonna have a miserable day. <laughs> if you're angry. If you're angry, and you know what, she's still gonna have a good day. So you, you might as well make the most of it and make her happy. And that's why I support Lady Ed. Everything I do is to support her and the family. That's what it's about. Yeah. Yeah. I was I was hearing this preacher recently speak about Jezebel. And Jezebel told, I think it was David, that if she didn't kill him within 24 hours, she killed himself. And David took off running. And I was like, <laughs> Jezebel wasn't no joke at all. Damn. I was like, if nope. she didn't kill him in 24 hours, she killed himself. And he took off. So he needed like a miracle from God to save him from Jezebel. Mm -hmm. So I, I, and that's one thing about the pandemic is brought me closer to church through my phone. This, I mean, because I kind of got away from certain things, but now it's like the drawn to hearing great preachers through the phone. I'm like, wow, I never knew about that before. And it's like, well, if you've been going to church, you would have known about that. But um, yeah. that's just one thing I thought about since he talked about standing by your woman and Jezebel. Mm -hmm scared the hell out of David. So I thought that's something I bring up. But <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm telling you, we run the world. You just might as well accept it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can multitask, right? That's yeah. What yeah. We can multi we can do like five things. I always say my maximum is five. Any more, then I have to say, hmm, let me go ahead and you know bring it back. But but in, in most cases and men there you guys are amazing, but it's 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 one dimension Directional is that the word I'm looking yeah. for? Yeah, one dimensional. Yeah, right. There you go. Well, this is a pretty boring world without women, and there'd be nobody on it without women. <laughs> yeah, like you know, an example I mean, we, of that. We bring, the, we bring the nuclear power to set it off, but without you, there's no, there's nothing to put the put the quicken under. You know what I mean? Yeah. You, guys have the, you guys are the reservoir where God sends everything to. Mm -hmm. So right. it's 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 I'm I'm probably one of the few people who sit around looking at women from that point of view, I'm, among other point of views, but mm -hmm. that's one of them that comes to mind. You know, it's like without them, you know, it's like I mean everyone depends on each other. It's not all just physical. Actually, right. I've always wondered how do people's souls look. You ever thought about that? Someone should do a story about how a soul looks, because you know what I mean. I mean. You can see really beautiful people, men or women, but sometimes coming out of them is not beauty. You know what I mean? So it's 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 just like uh, uh, Bella was saying, beauty is a is uh, something that's kind of spiritual, I guess. It's not always physical. Yeah. That's kind of what I'm what I'm what I'm hitting on. But you all are both beautiful inside and outside, which is very cool. Thank you. Because Praise God. There are some people that, as you know, in your line of work, they hit a specific, a particular level, and they're like, damn, I mean, you can't even, <laughs> when, they're, when they're doing their thing, it's like, cool, but once they get out of that thing, it's like, you can't stand to be around that person. And you all are very, you know, like human beings, you're not like, I may, I do this, and, you know, it's like, like I said, I never even knew that um, Irene was a network producer. If I did know, maybe one beer too many bit into the wrong gray cell and took it away. <laughs> but all I'm just saying, you you got you women are pretty cool. You're very down to earth, very spiritual, and very organic. <laughs> Is that the word organic? Organic. I like that word. <laughs> and, Anti-pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> you know, growing up, I came from a family of beautiful women. I always tell everybody I'm the ugliest in my family. Oh, but yeah. uh, seriously, I mean, everybody in the city wanted a woman out of my family. And they, if I go back to my hometown, they know immediately who my family is. But my mother taught me growing up, what's more important is your inside. 
if you have beauty on the inside, then you have beauty everywhere. Mm -hmm. So that's, I've never, I I never looked at myself like, you know, the, the, the attraction or whatever. I don't, it's what's on the inside. It's my intellect and it's my heart. That's important. Right. No, definitely. But I have some, I add to it too. Um, I've also learned through this journey, right? Cause I was, I was very lucky and I'm thankful to meet some amazing people. Like one of, one of my really good friends, um, her name is Jet Seeson and she's like um, an amazing, uh, she also one of the landowners, right? But her story, she shared with me her story and I was allowed to meet her network. And so one of them, um, he, he told me, he said, we need to get ready to be ready. Mm-hmm. because our um, how we set in our day right how we get ready um, if I step outside and go to the grocery store my hair is everywhere that's how I mm-hmm. feel I don't want to say hello to people I don't want to you know because I'm in my own internal bubble right mm-hmm. but if I set my day to go ahead and and get ready and put you know and, and feel good about myself then that energy radiates to the people around me and I don't have to, and they're drawn to that, um, that, that feeling or that, um, that energy, that smile, that something that makes them feel good about themselves too. It's not that I have to forcefully say, hey, I'm right here, right? But mm-hmm. the, it, it's recognizable. And so now every day I do that, I have to get ready to be ready. Yeah. You start you know, because we, because that that portrays a type of um, confidence um, within ourselves that people are going to be drawn to. And sometimes when I speak with other women too, I teach them that. You know, I teach yeah. them, hey, you know, when you feel, when when you do that, then people want to get to know who you are. They want to they want to learn about you, yeah. even if the story is positive or negative. It becomes that that meaning that touches their hearts for that one particular second, because we only have 15 seconds to make a first impression. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, we're also, it's about leaving your signature mark everywhere you go. So that way they remember you without forcefully saying, Hey, um, get to know I am today. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Yeah. And it it actually segues into what I wanted to ask. How would you want to be remembered? Wow. Right. (laughs) What's what's that's that's a question. But how would you like to be remembered? Who are you asking? <laughs> I know. I like who are you asking. Are you asking? Are you asking all of us, or are you asking? Yeah, I'm, I'm asking everyone. But since Irene was the last one that she brought up, but let me segue into it and ask her, or <laughs> anyone can jump in and just answer that question. Well, I guess. Uh, how do I want to be remembered? I guess the dragonfly that God created me to be in reality, because mm-hmm. it's, I want to be remembered as somebody to really help the dreams and visions because in a back lie to one, it says, write the vision down on the table, make it plain. It will surely come. It will not tarry. Right. right. So he chooses because though many are called only a few are chosen. And he says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all the righteousness shall be added unto you. Then I want to be remembered as that person that helps achieve the dreams and the visions that they have for themselves through the gifts, talents, and abilities he has, he has given us to be able to share how amazing it is he is beyond the world system. That's how I want to be remembered. Very cool. Very beautiful. Next up with the question is Miss Bella Mayori. I want to be <laughs> Miss, Miss, Miss Butterfly by the by the. Um, by the I want to be remembered as someone who was like a silent hero, I guess. In terms of, I don't, you know, a lot of people are in this world and they want to. They're like, what can I take from it? But I feel like, what can I give? I feel like I'm here to to contribute to make something better. And so, with that being said, I want to be remembered as someone who contributed to something good, who was able to make some kind of difference, change, or um, to better humanity in some type of way. And that's how I want to be remembered, to give a giving person, not taking mm-hmm. away. I think mm-hmm. that's why I'm here, is to give. The reason I call you butterfly, because I was your cons. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Same question. Well, that's funny how you brought up Butterfly because you know that is my one of my theme songs, Butterfly. And Butterfly is a song about my life, and that's really how I want to be remembered. Um, based on everybody has times of darkness, but the mm-hmm. fact that I was able to have the strength and the hope and the faith to hold on and work through it is a lesson for everyone and a light for everyone, and, and it's inspiring. So. Mm-hmm. You listen to that song, that's exactly how I want to be remembered. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. and, I need and, it. I need that. And I, we uh, go through uh, it, ladies. I'm yes. telling you. <laughs> and I want everybody to know that she's been chosen one of the best, California's best emerging poets, poets right? Uh, California's best emerging poet, and then America's best emerging poet, and also author of Diary of a Ready Woman. Yes. Nice. Definitely. Yeah, yes. definitely. Thank you so much. <laughs> and now we've got two minutes left. I'm going to ask the reads to come up and answer that question. Oh, okay. Lady and the man. Lady first. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lady is always first, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I would like to be remembered as someone who has a tender heart, who is open, open, um, my own heart for everyone to share the love uh, that I have in me and that it would help others to find their way back to their own hearts too. Very cool. And Grandmaster Flash? (laughs) (laughs) Okay. uh, Well, my whole purpose in life is to help other people and be in service. And um, it comes to me in different ways. You know, it just happens things show up and I, I'm called upon to do that. That's always been the way it's been. And um, I know a lot of uh, very talented people and they don't know who I am, but somehow I'm able to get back and help them. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think that's what's important. Kind of like uh, my hero is like Mother Teresa or, yes. you know, yeah. and then of course, great people. There were, you know, Martin Luther King or, or just a small guy that nobody remembers who made a big difference in China standing in front of the tank, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a, any way you can help and give, that's you're part of the puzzle and part of life. That's what Amen. we're here to do. We're, we're all cool. one on this planet. Very cool. We all got to cool. live together. Amen. Amen. 